Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create an ADF application that contains multiple pages. And what we're going to do is actually base those pages on a template. And we're going to do a little bit of debugging with our task flows. So our pages are going to be included in our task flow and I'll show you how to use our expression language tester to uh, do a little bit of debugging. So let's first of all start off with a new application here and I'm just gonna say you know fusion web application let's keep this simple we'll just call this debugging ADF task flows so now that I've got that I'll go ahead and collapse that and I'm going to go to my ADFC config.xml file and um, I'm going to just put maybe like three different pages on here, three different views. I'll just call that page one, page two, keep it really generic, and page three. And as far as navigation goes, I'm also going to have a wild card control flow rule and have some outcomes that look like this. And so we're going to be referencing these strings from our navigation. Okay, so now that we have that, before I double click and create a page, I'd actually like to create a page template. So we'll go down here to JSF Facelets. We'll create a quick little template. I'll stick with the default name. And I'm going to go in here and create a facet definition so I can have a little editable region. So I'll just have one facet definition and I'll call it body. As far as attributes, think of an attribute as like a variable. And um, so if I have any text that I want to make truly dynamic from uh, within my page, I can do that. Okay, so I'll just put in here panel title. And I'll give a default value of the title. So here's my template. I'll go ahead and start building my template. I'm really trying to keep this really simple here. I'm just going to place on the page a panel header. And instead of this being static text that just says panel header, what I'm going to do is go to my expression builder and under here for scoped variables under attributes, this is panel title. Okay, by the way, I'm on version 11.1.2.3, in case you were wondering. Okay, so when I create a page that's based on this template, I can then, from within the page, change what this text says. Okay, so how about the editable region? Well, inside of my panel header, I can place my facet definition and point to the body facet. Okay, so the way I place it right there, um, it looks like the editable region is pretty small. We can always move things around. That's the beauty of, of templates is that if you need to make a change to the structure, you can always uh, do that later and it will affect all the pages that are based on that template. Okay, what else do I have here? Well, I have a menu bar. Inside of my menu bar facet, I can place a menu bar component. Inside of my menu bar component, I'll create a menu. And as far as my menu items go, I'm going to have one that says page one, and then page two, and then page three. So you'll see here that I don't have anything here for the action dropdown, and that's because I don't have my template in this task flow right here. So I'll go ahead and grab this template and drag it on here. So now when I'm on here you'll see that I have these different choices. So I have P1 right here. I'll just have my menu title say page choices. Okay, so I'm going to have two more command menu items, so I'll go ahead and copy and then paste a couple times and then just modify them.
This will be page 3. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, so I have my page template. I've got menu within there. Looking good. And so now I can go back to here. Here's my page 1. And I'll base that on my template. Okay, so there's the title. I'm going to change this to where it says a different title. I'll just have this say page one. Here's my editable region. If I actually had this facet inside of a stretch container, then it would be much larger. But we won't worry about that right now. What I want to do is just focus on creating the basic pages, and then we're going to do a little bit of uh, debugging. Let's do the same thing with our page two. And here's page 3. Okay, we go ahead and save this. Okay, so now what if I had something inside of this area right here, like maybe an input text? Let me go to text and selection. Here's my input text. Okay, and um, I'll just have this label read name. And as far as the value goes, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say session scope dot. We'll call this full name. And let me just copy this because we're going to reference this in a little bit. And I'll do the same sort of thing here. If I right click and copy this component, I can go to my page two and do the same sort of thing. And then for page 3, so here's my task flow. And one of the things uh, that you can do here as far as debugging is you can right click and you can actually place a breakpoint on whatever activity you want to. You're not just limited to uh, views. It can be any of these types of activities. So I'm going to put breakpoints on all of these. And so now what I'm going to do is right click on this page one and instead of running I'm going to debug. I'm going to restart the server so it runs in debug mode. Okay and you'll see here that our page has launched and it is it does look like it's just spinning here but really what's going on is we are at a breakpoint within our application. And I know this because I can go into JDeveloper here and it shows me that I'm on this page. What's also interesting about this is that uh, and there's all sorts of things you can hear, do here in debug mode, but what I find most useful is this EL evaluator. Okay, so for example, this expression that I had in here, which was the um, session scope dot full name, at this point I haven't set the full name so if I click on evaluate it shows up as null. Okay, I'm going to now continue on so this button up here resume and I'll go to my window now and the page is actually loaded so I'm going to type in Julie Johnson and you'll see I have my different uh, page choices. How about I go to page 2? Well, once again, it looks like I'm just spinning right here, but remember we put a breakpoint on each one of those pages. So you'll see by looking at this arrow that we are indeed sitting at page two. Notice what this is now evaluating to. It's evaluating to Julie Johnson. Okay, so when you're debugging a web application, Really, you're just kind of toggling back and forth between this debug mode in here, and also don't forget that you've got uh, your web browser is too that you need that you need to interact with. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, 
continue on here. I'm going to type in Joe Schmo, and then I'll hit page three. Looks like it's spinning, but you'll see that it's just waiting on this page right now. You'll see that my full name is now setting at, uh, sitting at Joe Schmo. So that's pretty much how the breakpoints and debugging work with your activities. I just want to emphasize that your breakpoints for your activities are not just limited to view activities. They can be on any of the activities. Okay, so when I'm finished debugging, I just go ahead and uh, terminate this. And I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.